Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to be setting up and experimenting with a PicoMite, which is a Raspberry Pi Pico running a version of the basic programming language. Specifically, a PicoMite runs MMBasic, which was written by Jeff Graham for the MicroMite microcontrollers and MaxiMite computers. So, let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have a Raspberry Pi Pico, which, unlike other Raspberry Pi models, at the time of making this video was in stock at major Pi retailers including Adafruit, Pi Moroni and the Pi Hut. The Pico is a microcontroller rather than a general purpose computer like other Raspberry Pis and has a recommended price of $4 or £3.60. This said I paid £6 for this Pico because it's got pre-soldered headers as we can see under here and this will allow me to plug it straight into a breadboard. Here specifically I'm going to be using this Monk Makes breadboard for the Raspberry Pi Pico where if we take the Pico and plug it in at this end it goes in uh, down there like that and push that down here Hopefully it'll go in. There we are. And as you can hopefully see, the great thing about this particular breadboard is it's got all the connections for the Pico actually labeled on each particular rail. Oh, and we're also going to need a micro USB to USB type A cable to connect the Pico to a computer. It'll plug in down here. Now, just in case you're not aware, a Pico is based on Raspberry Pi's RP2040 microcontroller chip, which contains a dual-core ARM Cortex-M0 Plus CPU clocked at up to 133 MHz, together with 264 kilobytes of RAM and 2 MB of onboard flash storage. The job of a Pico is to control other electronic components, and the board is normally programmed using MicroPython or C++ or similar modern languages. However, here we're going to be using MMBasic simply because I think that running BASIC on a Pico is a very cool and interesting thing to do. So, here we now are on the Jeff's Projects website from Jeff Graham. Very interesting website if you're into electronics and computing and things like that. But here we're going to limit our attention to this section over here, basic on the Raspberry Pi Pico, where as you can see there are two links. And the second link is for setting up a PicoMite VGA, where you run basic on a Raspberry Pi Pico connected to a VGA monitor and a PS2 keyboard. I might try that in a future video, it requires a bit of wiring up. But for now we're going to stick to basic interpreter and here as with every other page on this website everything is very very well documented i really like this website you can spend ages just reading this site it's it's really interesting anyway the setup our pico might we'll scroll down to the bottom to find the downloads where we want this download here the pico might firmware and also a manual so i'll click on download and this would download a zip file as you can see i've already downloaded it so i won't waste Jeff's bandwidth by downloading it again, so I'll cancel on that, and we'll go to the, the folder with the, the zip file in, and we'll extract the zip file like that. Yes, Windows, that'll be fine. There we are, it's finished. And as you can see, there's various files here. One is the manual, let's just open that up. This manual is brilliant, 170 page manual with all sorts of stuff in it. This is really, really good. Teaches you how to use the thing. All the commands are documented. Fantastic documentation. But what we want to do is to copy this file across to our Raspberry Pi Pico to set it up as a Pico Mite. So to do this, we need to go across to the Pico and to hold down its boot select button and then to plug it in to the PC. And back on our Windows desktop, we can see it's mapped the Pico as a drive. It's down here as drive F. So if we take the UF2 file here for PicoMite and we copy that file like that and we open up Drive F and we paste it in like uh, that and this will set up our PicoMite. And there we are, it's copied and if we now look across to the Pico, its little LED is flashing indicating everything has been set up OK. So what we now want to do is to communicate with the PicoMite. And to do that, we need to first of all find out where it is connected to our computer. 
And here in Windows, we do that by going to this PC and right clicking and going to manage like that. And then we'll go down to device manager and we'll go down to uh, ports, common LPT there. And we can see we've got a USB serial device, which has to be here, the PicoMite on COM3. If you've got lots of non-standard USB devices plugged into your computer, things that aren't mice and keyboards and storage and stuff like that, you might have to check what's there before you plugged into Pico to find out exactly what port it's on. But here it's clearly on COM3. So to access the PicoMite, we now need a terminal program. And here I'm going to use Putty, which can be freely downloaded from putty.org. So let's run it up. There we go. And we now need to configure things to connect to the Pico. And the first thing we need to do is to go here to select the connection type to be serial. And as you can see, it's defaulted to COM1. We know we want to use COM3. We just looked that up, so we'll do that. And we'll set the speed here to be a 38400. This is fantastic classic computing, isn't it? And we now need to go to keyboard where we need to set the backspace key to be Control H like that. And then I'm going to go now to Appearance and to change the console font, which you don't have to do, but I'm going to do this so things will read better here on video. So I'm going to change this to Console As Bold 26, which is going to be nice and clear to use in this video. So we'll do that like that and uh, OK. Next, what you do have to do is to go down to a serial down here to make sure all this is set correctly. It's already got COM3, 38400 as a speed there. It needs data bits 8, stop bits 1, parity none, but also flow control needs to be set to none like that. And we can now click on open to open up the PicoMite. But before I do that, I'm going to go back to the top and I'm going to give a name here. I'm going to call these settings Pico. Might seems a good name and click on save. So next time we want to connect to the Pico, we can just select the settings and load them in. Anyway, we don't need to do that now. It's all set up. So we can now just click on open. Very exciting. And there we are. And we'll maximize this window like that. And now all we have to do is to press the magic button, which is the enter key on the keyboard. I'll do that. And there we are. We now have a command prompt in MM Basic. And to test it's working, we'll type the classic basic command, which is a print hello like that. And uh, it works. Isn't that marvelous? Let's try as well print, uh, I don't know, 674 divided by 87. And uh, all that's right as well. Marvelous. And as a final test, there is a command called memory here in MM Basic. And if we enter that, there we are. We can see all the available storage on our PicoMite, all waiting to be used for exciting stuff. Greetings. Here I am back again. We're now going to do some PicoMite basic programming. But just before we start, I'm going to enter this command. And what this will do is to change the size of our console so it is 16 characters deep and 64 across. And I'm doing this because the default of 24 by 80 is too big to use with the font size I've selected. So I'll enter like that. Nothing will apparently happen. But when we go to create a program by typing edit like this, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have a menu. This would not have fitted on had I not changed the size of the console. So let's now write a basic program. And in MM Basic, we can choose whether or not we want to use line numbers, but I'm going to use them just for nostalgia's sake here, I think. So I'm going to start by doing 10 for A equals 1, 2, 5. And then we'll do a 20 print Mr. Mr. Scissors, I think. And we'll do a 30 next A. There we are. A nice classic basic program. And we'll save by pressing F1. There we are. And to run the program, we type guess what run like that. And there we are. The program's worked. It's printed Mr. Scissors five times. And it's worth noting that on a PicoMite, programs are written directly to flash memory. So if you turn off the Raspberry Pi Pico, boot up into MM Basic again, your program will be exactly as you left it. This said, you might want to work with lots of different programs. How could we do that? Well, we could save the program. And to save a program, it's a good idea to first give it a name. You don't have to, but it's a good idea. So let's do that by doing edit to get back into our program. And we add a program name by putting it in a comment right at the start. So we'll do that. We have a single quote and we'll call this uh, Mr. Scissors like that. 
I think I'm going to get rid of my line numbers now. I've had my nostalgia. We'll work without them from now on, but I just thought I'd show you they do work if you want them. So we'll do that like that. There we are. And uh, we'll press F2 this time to save and run just to show you it still works. It still does. But we can now save the program by typing flash save and one. And this will save the program into the first flash memory slot. And to prove that, if we type flash list like that, there it is. Our first program is there called Mr. Scissors. But what if we wanted a second program? Well, I could do edit to get back into the program. Let's change it to be something different. There we are. And if we uh, save and run this F2, obviously it has changed. We can now do a flash save and two to put that into slot two. And if we do a flash and a list like that, you can see we now have two saved programs. And obviously right now, if I do run, it'll run the Stanley program. If I do run, it'll print Stanley rules five times. But if I do a flash and a load one, and I now do a run, it'll print Mr. Scissors. Because of course, if we now go into edit, we're now working on the Mr. Scissors program rather than the Stanley program. And it's worth noting that whilst here we're saving to flash memory slots, if you have a micro SD card reader connected to your Raspberry Pi Pico, MM Basic can also save to micro SD card. Right, I've now hooked up three LEDs with current limiting resistors to the Pico. And if we look at this wiring diagram, we can see exactly what's going on. I've got each of GP13, 14 and 15 wired to a current limiting resistor, a 220 ohm current limiting resistor, which then goes to an LED and through to the ground rail. And if we go across to the console here, I've written a piece of code to make use of this. It is called running LED with a comment at the top. And then as you can see, I'm setting GP13, 14 and 15 to be digital outputs. And one of the great things about the Pico is you can set all of the general purpose GP pins to be digital outputs, analog outputs, digital inputs, analog inputs, PWM, etc. After that, I've defined a variable called speed to be 1000, which is going to be 1000 milliseconds. We're going to use this in the timing of a loop. And then after that, I've defined label A, after which we're setting GP13 to be 1. That'll turn on the first LED. We're then pausing for the value of speed. We're then turning off the first LED, turning on the second, pausing again, same for the third. And then finally at the end, we're going to go to label A to create an infinite loop. So we keep cycling through the LEDs. And I would point out there are two ways you could write this code in MM Basic. You can do it as I've done here using a label, or the code could be like this with line numbers. And where the final command could be go to 60 to take us back to the start of our loop. But I think it's better not doing that. I think it's better not using line numbers and using a label. So let's bring in a shot of the board and run the code like that. And as we can see, yes, we've got our little running LED. It's a little bit slow, isn't it? So let's just uh, stop it, which we can do by pressing Control C to break into our infinite loop like that. If we go back to edit, let's change the speed. We've got a variable for it. Let's change it to say, 300 milliseconds like that, and a save and run again. Oh, that's a bit better, isn't it? We've now got a running LED going at a higher speed. Now, the final thing I want to point out here is that at the moment, we've got the Pico running connected through to a computer, which we're using to program it down this cable. But the Pico might is designed like any microcontroller to function entirely independently. And so what I'm going to do is to go back to the code and we will just stop things again. And if I do a flash list, you'll see I've saved the program in slot three. And if I now enter the command option auto run three like that, what that will do is to auto run the program in slot three when the Pico boots. So what I'm going to do here is to come out of this, we'll close this terminal down, there we are. And if we go back to the board, I'm going to disconnect it from the computer. It's actually connected via this extension cable, so I'll unconnect that. And obviously, the light's gone out. And here I've got a power bank. So we can power it independently by this battery. Let's just turn that on. And then if I now plug in the power bank like that, it'll hopefully take not too long. The thing will first of all boot up. There it is. 
And yes, it is running the program. So we've now got the Pico, the Pico Mite running independently, executing some basic code. Right, just when you thought it couldn't get any more exciting, it has because I've wired in this push switch between GP12 and the 3.3 volt rail. And if we go across to our code, I've changed this a bit into another program called Switch Demo. And this starts out by setting pin GP12 to be a digital input. And then after that, and importantly, it's got the argument pull down. And what this does is to turn on an internal pull down resistor in the Pico so that the input is not floating around when the switch isn't pressed. It's either pulled down to the ground rail through the internal pull down resistor, or it'll be taken up to 3.3 volts when we push the switch. Other than that, things haven't changed very much. We set the other things up as previously. We've still got our loop, but inside our loop, I've added in this command here, if pin GP12 equals one, in other words, if the switch is pressed, we're going to go to label B. And guess what happens at label B? Let's have a look. At label B, we're going to turn on all the LEDs, wait for three seconds, and go back to label A. I just had to think of something to demonstrate the working of the switch. So let's again run the code like that. And as we can see, our LED is in its little running light configuration. But if I press the switch, oh look, all the LEDs come on, stay there for three seconds, and then we go back to our little uh, LED running light. I'll do it again. I could play with this all day. There we are. That's very exciting and it should go back to the other thing as it was previously. So there we are. We've added in a switch and made it work in MM Basic. Now, as is hopefully becoming clear, MM Basic is an excellent implementation of the beginner's or purpose symbolic instruction code and in its PicoMite incarnation takes full advantage of the capabilities of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Opportunities include control and readout of all kinds of devices and sensors, and MM Basic on the Pico can even control an LCD display, which I may come back to in a future video. If I covered it here, this video would never end. But the final thing I do want to mention here is that if you want to try out MM Basic and you haven't got a Pico, you don't want a Pico, Jeff Graham has made a version available for DOS or Windows, as we can see on his website here, and it's available from the link down here, as you can see. And if you download the files as we did previously, you end up with a couple of files here. The first time you run MM Basic, Windows objects to it, you have to say yes, it's okay, which I think it is. But uh, let's just load in a file. Things here work slightly differently to the Pico because we don't have things like memory slots. You can just load from a drive. And there we are, the file is in. So we can edit. I can run the thing. There we go. So as you can see, if you want to experiment with MM Basic, all you need is a Windows PC. Four decades ago, I took my own first practical steps in computing, writing programs in BASIC on this, a Sinclair ZX81. And 40 years later, I've very much enjoyed being reacquainted with the BASIC programming language on the PicoMite. And I'd like to thank Jeff Graham and his colleagues for making the PicoMite a reality. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.